In this video, we'll provide an overview of the scientific method and specific discussion of the distinction between a research hypothesis and a research question. Most science courses and textbooks will provide some overview of the scientific method, and it looks something like this generally, where initial evidence is used to develop a hypothesis which would provide a tentative explanation of what's occurring um, in, or what was seen previously. A good scientific hypothesis will allow you to generate predictions. Those pre predictions can be tested with experiments that are designed specifically to test one or more of those predictions. And when we conduct those experiments, they sort of come together and you look at, is your experiment consistent with the predictions of a hypothesis? If it is, it would reinforce the hypothesis. If it's not, you would need to discard or alter the hypothesis in some way. This type of diagram is a good representation of a lot of hypothesis-driven research, but doesn't adequately describe all types of science, and we need to make some modifications in some cases. Nearly all research will begin with a research question. This is a detailed and testable question that defines scope and goals of the project. It's typically going to be both more detailed and more concrete than overarching project goals or, or aims of a field. And these investigations will give you a very general prompt and you'll need to refine that down to a detailed question that represents what you, you, you and your team will be investigating in the laboratory. In some cases, we know enough about what's happened previously based on theory or previous observations and experience to make a prediction about what's gonna happen. A research hypothesis is a statement containing an education, educated guess on what will be observed in an experiment, and that educated guess is typically based on a tentative interpretation or explanation based on those previous observations or experience. There tends to be a, an explanation of why something is happening. In cases where you don't have enough previous experience to formulate a hypothesis, you'd stop at the research question. Um, and that would be more descriptive research as opposed to hypothesis-driven research. So let's look at an example. This is a, a photograph of the San Joaquin River and a research question about the plant life in the San Joaquin River may simply be what species of aquatic plants are found on the San Joaquin River at Scout Island. So we've defined a region, we're looking simply for aquatic plants, but we don't know what's there, we're gonna go in and we're gonna inventory, collect plants, classify them, and document what's present. A different research project may have more prior observation and look at invasive species like Elodea compete for sunlight, and that may be based on other locations and um, previous experience, there's a, a theory of that if one plant is above another and is absorbing the light, it doesn't make it to the other one, that, that seems reasonable, and that that would reduce the diversity and amounts of native species of aquatic plants. So again, it's concrete, it's detailed, but in this case, prior observation or experience, either at this location or another, allows us to make a prediction about what would happen and why, and that merits a hypothesis and not simply a, a, a question. So as we come back to this and we talk about descriptive research or um, these question-driven research, we do something like look at this hypothesis and prediction and sort of consolidate it, that we would formulate a research question. That question still needs to be deta detailed, but the experiments, instead of being designed around a prediction, they would be designed to answer a very specific and detailed question. And based on that, we might formulate a hypothesis about what's going on, or this might be part of evidence um, for a hypothesis. So whether we're looking at a question or a hypothesis, whether we have enough prior information to make an educated guess about the outcome of an experiment, there's a couple attributes you're going to see in common. Is first, they're going to be connected in some way to larger goals. So in, in the case of these investigations, we'll give you a prompt and your research question or research hypothesis should fall within that prompt and address it in some way. A good question or hypothesis defines the scope of 
an investigation of what is being studied and what is not being studied. And that boundary is, is important. It needs to have enough detail to be testable. So in our example of the San Joaquin River, if we specified that we're looking for aquatic plants in the river, we're not collecting bacteria, we're not collecting animals, um, and it's in the river basin, not on the shores, we're looking in a specific region around Scout Island, um, it has to have enough detail that it can describe what experiment will be conducted. If we develop a good research question or hypothesis, um, it will be a wonderful guide in experimental design, in writing protocol for how you'll conduct the experiment, in analyzing your data and formulating conclusion. All these things should relate back to the, a good research question or hypothesis. As you go through these tasks in the experiment, you may want to revise or need to revise your question or hypothesis. Let's look at another example briefly of Sea Lion Cove at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. And the zookeepers are interested in what causes increased incidence of eye problems in sea lions um, in their exhibit. And it's typical of other zoos uh, around the country that they often see higher levels of eye problems than you see in animals in the wild. There could be a lot of things going on here. We might look at the types and concentrations of organic acids in the exhibit water and see if they're similar to the ocean. This would be a case where we don't have a prediction about what's going to happen. We're questioning or, or trying to describe what's present and we'll test for these acids. The same could be said for many other chemicals. Could be said for light levels at different depths. Um, could be looking at what, how their differences in the feeding styles. But these would be ones without a prediction where we're trying to describe what's pr present and what's different between the um, exhibits in a zoo and the wild. We could also study it from an angle where we have a, a prediction. We might have a hypothesis that glare contributes to the eye problems and that reducing glare in the tank by allow, allowing algae to accumulate on the bottom um, would reduce the incidence of eye problems. And in this case, we have an explanation, we have a, a prediction about what's occurring, and we label that as a research hypothesis.